train track. That's the freight line that runs into the mine.
turn. Let's keep moving. Oh, what a nice looking treasure chest. Finish him. Go! Second form. Gale! I'll handle it. Here! It's my turn. Go! I'll get you up. My turn. before we even get there. <sighs> yeah, I wasn't expecting this path to be so steep. Man, you city slickers need to toughen up. Left, right, left, right. Advantage is ours. Let's finish him.
My turn. My turn. Target's eliminated. Let's get going. I did it! Nicely done! <laughs> I did it! Success! Yeah, more of that! <laughs> I did it! Let's buy treasure. Now's the chance! Let's get him! My turn! Second form, damn! Hostiles neutralized. Guess we're safe. Oh, what a nice looking treasure chest. Dangerous foe. Stay on guard. Watch out. This is a tough one. Go! All right. Let's do this. Yeah, okay. Okay.
Good luck. Watch and learn. Eat Go get him. Now we're talking. Yeah, let's keep it up. Time to waste. This is a pretty nice view. Oh, actually, I didn't even know about this place. Turn. All right, let's do this. Here's your right. thing. My turn. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Catch. My turn. Hang in there, everyone. Thanks. 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 <laughs> My turn. Now's a chance. Gotcha. You're done. Now we're talking. Yeah, let's keep it up. Trigger chest. All right, if you want to fight that badly, my turn. Let's do this! Got to do it to me! Leave it to me! Arcus, activate! Right! Keep it up, everyone! Right. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Catch. Go.
My turn. Second form. Slack up all the time.
treasure chest. The advantage is ours. Let's finish it. Here we go. The second form. Damn! Another chance. I'm open. Okay. It's my turn. <laughs> Is everyone okay? That's by treasure. Rock formation. Right. Let's 
Neutralized. Guess we're safe. Right. 
<laughs> Handsome and strong. I'm the total package. I did it! <laughs> I did it! All right! Done. Looks like a tough one. Watch out! This looks like a nice spot.
What even is this?
quite correct, of course. Both the Provincial Army and the Railway Military Police have their own roles to fill, each important to the Empire. Query for you then. How would you respond if a crisis were to occur in multiple places at the same time? Captain Claire Revelt, I presume? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I've heard much about you. It's an honor, Lord Alborea. Please, no need for formalities between us. Rufus is fine. Still, you seem puzzled as to what I'm doing in Ruhr. Or to be more specific, how I got here. Do I assume correctly?
country's railways are completely under your control. Had I taken a train, you would have known it. And yet, there are no signs I passed through Ruhr Airport either. The truth is more mundane than fantastic. I arrived aboard the Alborea family's private airship, which currently sits just off a highway on the outskirts of the city, awaiting my return. I... Blind spots are an unavoidable reality. We all have them. As on the ball as you are, you do well not to overestimate your own superiority. After all, the hardest falls are the ones we don't see coming. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Now, isn't it time both sides withdrew? And remove those unsightly vehicles from the streets at once. A provincial army must conduct itself with valor and grace at all times. Would you not agree? your family has the top two floors of a world-class high-rise all to itself. Yeah, even high-ranking nobles would trip over themselves to secure a luxury suite like this. I was afraid you guys would react exactly like you just did. That's why I just kept my mouth shut.
Sure, it's large, but it's so pointlessly large for just two people, and the only servant we have is Sharon. If you have Sharon, that's the only maid you need, even for a place this big. <laughs> you said it. Well, we'll be guests here for the next three days. So, thanks for having us, Elisa. Well, of course. Don't mention it. My, my, my. Is it just me, or do I detect more than a hint of red on Lady Elisa's fair visage? Could she be... embarrassed? Uh, I am not! <laughs> We're here on a field study, so could we at least try to take this a little... I'll lighten up, Machias. It just wouldn't be a proper field study without one of us getting embarrassed about our family. walked through the door. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to see you. Now, if you'll just follow me, I'll show you inside. than I'd expected. You can see the whole town out there below. Talk about the lap of luxury. Looks like a comfy place to take a nap. You guys really think so? I've been away from Rua for half a year, so I guess it does feel kind of nice to be home. <laughs> I guess that's natural. I've already finished preparing dinner. Please, let me know whenever you're ready to eat. Thank you. About all of you, but I'm pretty hungry. What do you say we? Oh, wait, actually we can't, can we? Mother said she'd be eating with us tonight, so we need to wait until she comes home. Lisa, if you wolf down so much food so quickly... Mm. 
You'll get fat. Just this once, I eat a balanced diet the rest of the time. But you've been bolting down every course so quickly, I'm surprised you haven't inhaled your napkin. Maybe we're gonna need to rethink your stage outfit for the concert. Crap, I almost forgot about that. If you're worrying about us, you don't need to, you know? I know your mother promised she'd have dinner with us, but... We all know she's a busy woman. And she said she'd try to make some time for us tomorrow instead. But still... It's not that it bothers me so much, but she sits on Thor's board of directors. Who's she meeting with that's so important she can't even clear a little time to see us? She got off the Lusitania already, didn't she? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to say. She's not out on a date with a gentleman or engaging in any lascivious behavior, if that puts your mind at ease. <sighs> that's not what I'm worried about, not even close. Honestly? Hearing she was seeing a man might even put my mind at ease. Alisa?
let's get started. Go on, draw a card. After you, then. All oh, same score? We better draw again. After you, then. What? You can't do that! Oh, now you've done it! Mirror! Oh, now you've done it! Begin. We draw here, right? I'm first. Better draw again. I'm first. Take this. Mirror. Looks like I win.
I'm not going to hold back. Well then, go ahead and draw. I'll go first then. Now you've done it. Mirror! Ah, oh, crap. We're even. We'll have to redraw. It looks like you're up first. We're even. We'll have to redraw. It looks like you're up first. Ah, oh, crap. Bolt! Now you've done it. We're even. We'll have to redraw. It looks like you're up first. We're even. We'll have to redraw. I'll go first then. Bolt! Mirror! <laughs> Looks like I win this time. Lisa? Oh, it's you. Sorry, were you worried? A little, yeah. Seeing you like that just kind of reminded me of that night in Nord. Oh, right. I'm so pathetic. I keep going on about how I'm going to be independent, but then I get all worked up over something as trivial as this. Seeing the city from above at night is really something, though. And to think you got to take in a beautiful view like this every night growing up. Yeah, I guess so. It used to be my grandfather, my father, and my mother here. Then after my father died, Sharon joined us. But through the years, my family has always enjoyed seeing the lighted windows of Ruhr at night. Something that never changed, huh? I guess it is to you what Ymir's mountains are to me. <laughs> Maybe every family has something like that. Still, first my grandfather left. And now Sharon and I aren't here most of the time either. Mother just stays here all on her own. Every time I think of that, I just feel like crying. It breaks my heart. I can't understand why she chooses to be so alone. I thought so. You're not just angry at her then. <laughs> well, she gets under my skin, that's nothing new. But if I was in her place, I don't know how I'd cope. I couldn't live like she does, losing herself in her work all alone with no friends or loved ones by her side. She wasn't like that before, back when my dad was still alive. She's always been a career woman, but back then she was kind, funny. She had this warmth, you know? But ever since dad passed away, she hasn't been the same. Work became her life. She pushed grandfather out as chairman, all for what? More work? I've never seen her indulge herself. Not even once. If she isn't dining with some business partner, she eats nutrition bars instead of meals. Sharon scolds her for it, but... That's how she is. And that's why I'm scared. I don't want life to just pass her by. Uh, 
Where did that come from? You're always looking out for the people in your life. Even when they get on your nerves, you still care about them. It's like how you and I were at first, or how you were with Laura and Fee. Heck, I still remember how you told me off for hurting my sister's feelings. You've been keeping an eye out for Milliam all this time, too. And you should know that we're all really grateful to you for it. Especially me. <sighs> I'm worried about what's happening here in Ruhr, too. This is your home, and your mother might be caught up in whatever's going on. I think we should look into it. What do you say? What? But with all our field study tasks, where would we find the time? Why not do it while we're out handling those? Making some headway is always better than making none, right? I mean, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Everyone else does too. Fee cares. So does Elliot. Machias does too. Even Crow's been concerned about you. We can use our time in the city to poke around and find out more about what's going on. You know, kind of like we always do. Well... If you say so, but I'll save the thanks for later. Mm, I doubt Sharon will tell us anything, no matter how much we pester her. But I'll ask around and see if anyone I know has any idea what might be going on. It shouldn't be too late to give some of them a call at least. Alright, I'll leave the info gathering to you. Once we get our task list tomorrow, we can discuss how we want to do this. All right. Anyway, I think I'm going to start calling my contacts. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. If I were you, I wouldn't go around stroking girls' heads like that. I mean, you don't just go whispering sweet nothings into any girl's ear, do you? This isn't so different, really. Huh? Uh, oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's something I always did to my sister when she was feeling down. But now that you mention it, she did seem to resent it more as she got older. But when I stopped doing it, she called me insensitive and got all upset anyway. <sighs> I think your sister and I would have a lot to talk about. But... Anyway, I'll see you later. All right. Well, she seems like she's feeling better now. I just hope our efforts will turn up some good leads. I guess it would, seeing as we're right in the headquarters of the company that built these. Maybe it's the instructor. Hello. Reen Schwartz are speaking. Oh, good. It went through. Glad I was able to get your number from Milliam. Is this Captain Claire? It is. I apologize for calling so late. Are you free right now? Yeah. What's up? There's something important I'd like to discuss with you, but it's a matter best discussed in person. Would it be possible for you to meet me in the city? Sooner is preferable. Like, right now? Um, would this happen to be related to our field study? Technically speaking, yes. But with the provincial army on alert, traveling in a large group would draw too much suspicion. That's why I decided to contact you directly. You are the team leader. People keep saying that, but I never recall agreeing to it. But, sure, I guess. I'll head out right now. Where should I meet you? Go to the upper level. On the south side of the elevated walkway, you'll see a bar called F. It's a quiet, upscale establishment. The perfect place for a private discussion. A bar called F on the south side of the upper level. Got it. I'll head there right away. I'll be waiting. I'm not on a schedule or anything, though, so there's...
there's no need to rush. And by the way, I'd rather you didn't mention any of this to Elisa. Huh? Because what I want to discuss with you happens to involve the Reinford Company. But I'll leave it to your discretion. Anyway, you know where to find me. It feels a bit cruel to keep only Elisa out of the loop. But it sounds like it's pretty important. I think it'd be better to go now and tell everyone else about it later. Enjoy your night to the fullest. Wait, what? You have a date with a fetching young lady, don't you? I'll make sure no one notices your absence, especially my lady. Just be certain you're back by morning. I assure you, I'm not that lucky. I just got word that this acquaintance of mine was visiting Roar. And they wanted to catch up a bit, so I was going to slip out and see them for a little while. <laughs> Very well, then. I'll lock up behind you. I'd also be glad to help you build an ironclad alibi. No one would think twice, even if you were to stay out all night. I appreciate the thought, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Anyway, I'll be back later. Of course. Take care. quite a few people working. I guess it comes with the territory, working for the world's largest industrial manufacturer. What was that? Whoops. I thought so. Hey! Why are you running away? I'm surprised you noticed me. 
I was trying pretty hard to be stealthy. <sighs> How long were you hiding there? Wait, have you been trailing me ever since I left the penthouse? Well, I saw you slip out. So, where are you going? Are you really headed out for a late night romantic rendezvous? <sighs> what kinds of lies has Sharon been feeding you anyway? Okay, here's what's up. That totally sounds like a rendezvous. Sorry, I shouldn't have interfered. Whoa, whoa, it's not like that. <sighs> well, you know everything I know about it now. Why don't you come too? You sure? No reason not to. It sounded like whatever info she's got has something to do with our field study. And honestly, I wasn't all that keen on having a one-on-one -on -one with a military officer to begin with. Gotcha. But first, I want to walk around a bit. After we've been walking around all day? Whenever I come to a new city, I always like to get a feel for what it's like during the day and the night. I feel kind of uneasy if I don't. Oh, right. It must be a Jaeger thing. All right, I'll join you for a little stroll. I don't want to keep the captain waiting too long, though. Will once around town be enough? That'll be fine. Okay, let's roll. By the way, did you happen to run into Sharon on your way out? She saw me leaving, but she just let me go. Hmm. Even the best mates aren't that all-knowing. This was some kind of classy bar, I think? Seems pretty lively in there.
City's got a nice feel at night. Yeah, it's really pretty. This is where Claire said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. 
Oh. Hi. Yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard. Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? You sure you don't want me to go? That's not what I mean. I have a lot of questions. Like, about why Milliam transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Let's look at that standoff at the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the Provincial Armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbell is buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the Railway Military Police and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. I can't deny that. But at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give aid to terrorists unlike some others I could name. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. So the noble faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. The three airships the Imperial Liberation Front have been using have been traced back to Ordis as well. I'd wondered how they got their hands on those. I've heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Eustace's brother came to pick him up in Legram, didn't he? That's what Toval told us. And now, Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Clare, what's going on in Ruhr? And how are Elisa's family and the Reinford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The Railway Military Police is currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Reinford's first factory. Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Reinford's major divisions, right? It's one of the main divisions and handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel process. They're also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. The two of you are aware that project management at Reinford is split up across several major branches, right? It is? 
And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. But suffice to say, the chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Rhineford Group. Lately, the directors have... Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, Rhineford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. The company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large large enough to have their own internal allegiances, some to the nobles, with others supporting the reformist faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I'm sure Arena Reinford is aware of this to at least some extent as the company's chairman, but the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has the side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So, the first factory you guys have your sights set on for that inspection is aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly. And the provincial army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that investigation. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, I have my doubts she'll be able to target the underlying problem. Sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. And while all this is going on, the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I've told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country. But try to gain an understanding of the crisis unfolding here. Then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. Please have the bill sent to the Railway Military Police Branch Office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Wait! The bill! Looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel, too. For free, even. <sighs> I can't just go running after her now. Looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? She's sort of like Sarah, except responsible and composed. You can say that again. Oh. Must be yours. Hello? Reen Schwarzer speak. Reen? What are you doing? Oh, it's just you, Elisa. Well, what do you mean, it's just you? Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Whoa, hold on. A late night date? I thought you only had eyes for me, Reen. <laughs> anyway, good job, kiddo. You better spill all the details later, huh? He'll do no such thing. Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. I was with 
him too. Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best. Keep up the good work! so hard, they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks! You heard the boss, man. Tomorrow's a red-letter day for us. A real do-or-die moment, in every sense of the word. All our preparations will be rewarded soon, when we sweep in and take the Chancellor's head. Keep your eyes on the prize, and give it all you've got! Yeah! Especially for a city with this many factories. It must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say. Compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. Uh, sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Elisa? <laughs> Not as nice as last night must have been. I told you, I I'm sorry. Yeah! I'll bet you are! I cannot believe you! After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl! Ooh, the skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Well, all things considered, even if we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it was pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reen. Even dressed down, I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with the Provincial Army on patrol. I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle herself. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. Ah, <sighs> wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. But she was a real knockout. Come on, that would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Oh! No! It's not like I knew she was going to show up wearing a cocktail dress, I swear! You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? You lucky son of I mean for shame, Reen! We are here representing the Academy on a field study! I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information I got from her, we have a pretty good idea what's going on here in Ruhr. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the railway military police, prompting an inspection. And all the while, the Provincial Army's been here blatantly trying to prevent them from doing that? Let's not forget that the First Factory is run by none other than the Noble Faction. I know that the Divisional Directors have been operating without much in the way of executive oversight for years now. But Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the Divisions would yield more innovations. 
I never thought that'd lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Do the other divisions have their own political allegiances? Well, to give you a basic idea... This is a bit oversimplified, of course. Divisions are made up of many people, and they all have their own opinions. But the positions of each division's directors are clear as day, though. The first and second factories in particular have had a pretty fierce rivalry going on between them for years. But even still, I wouldn't have expected the first factory to do something flagrant enough to prompt a military inspection. Neither would I. Alright, we're gonna do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. And when we tie this up all nice and neat for her, even my mother will have to admit she's grateful to us. Sounds like a plan. That's the spirit! Offhand, I'd say this falls under the scope of our field study, too. Thanks, everyone. Sounds like we're in for a ride. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the field study tasks Sharon gave us for today. I think we can handle these. It's still 8 a.m., so we have plenty of time to work our way through the list. And while we're doing that, we can ask the people we meet about how things stand between Reinford's divisions. Look alive, everyone. It's time to get to work. Right. Roger. Gotcha. <laughs> 